All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Brandon Wilson, who is in Birmingham, Alabama. How are you doing, Brandon? I am doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, John. Absolutely. And Brandon's one of the world's most sought after communication and uh, executive consultants, and he's helped leaders uh, at some of the most influential companies uh, realize daring pursuits from building college campuses to addressing global wealth disparities. And what we're going to talk about today is your book, which is I, I can see there is behind you there. And uh, the book is called Sabotage, Leadership That Overcomes Betrayal, Theft and Deceit. Um, so, Brandon, uh, maybe we start off the, with the backstory to this, because you have some personal experience around this that formed the genesis of the book. Yeah, I did. And uh, but, you know, not unlike many leaders uh, mm -hmm. have have challenges or bouts with what we call leadership sabotage. You know, the challenge is, is that we don't talk enough about it. Uh, we, we just don't. And I think it's probably this deep sense of embarrassment. Uh, from being betrayed or having your reputation assassinated or from having someone steal from you or lie from you to you and get away with it, you know, of all things. Uh, and, you know, in my nearly 20 years of, of uh, communications and, and executive management experience, uh, I've helped all manner of leader unlock bold pursuits. I mean, that's my passion and that's what I specialize in. I think that all leaders uh, should multiple times a year, uh, think about, plan for, and execute something really bold and audacious. Uh, and you may even achieve some of those things uh, and have legacy defining impact. And, and throughout my career, I've helped leaders do that. Something that I started to see though happening was as, as effective as those leaders that I worked with became, um, the more we would start having discussions and conversations privately about uh, about things that were tangential to their leadership pursuits, right. uh, about people who were def employees who were defiant, people who were trying to slow down their progress. Uh, you hear corporate revenge a lot, people internally trying to get revenge or making you jump through a lot of hoops and X, Y, Z. And as skilled as these leaders are, uh, they lack the skills needed to see leadership sabotage before it st struck them or impacted their life. And they also lack the skills needed to overcome leadership sabotage when it did happen. And as yeah. much as I've worked with these leaders, nothing prepared me more to address sabotage than my own personal experiences. A real quick story about that is uh, I was uh, about 2014, 2013 or so. Uh, I sought out to buy another business uh, and 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 to grow by acquisition. Yep. And I had a great opportunity to do that. Uh, some mutual friends put me in touch with a CEO who was interested in selling his company. And uh, the, 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 the gentleman who was going to sell me his company um, was very gregarious, incredibly charismatic. Uh, and incredibly well connected. It was a jewel. It was a it was a deal that will, will likely make me millions of dollars. And I wanted that deal. And I said, let's go and do it. And I put the blinders on and I did it. And I said, let's go. Um, because I was not uh, you know, thinking about sabotage in that way, really thinking about that end goal, uh, I made some decisions and allowed myself to be coached into some uh, into a relationship that could be best defined as uneven. One of the things I did was in the against my the, the advice of counsel was this, to establish a third party entity uh, that would be part of the asset sale. So those are the assets that I would buy. And we agreed that we would start putting in our assets into this third entity. Well, about a year into the due diligence process, a year and a half into due diligence, I get a call from our attorney. Fast forward and you can guess it. The third entity yeah. never existed. <laughs> yeah, 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 My lawyer said, yeah. where is your money? Brandon, where is your money going? Um, and we filed separation papers, stopped giving money to the third entity that never was. And, and my saboteur showed himself for what he really is. And, and, and he's a bully. And we talk about how mm -hmm. to deal with bullies in this book. 
Uh, and he told me um, very candidly that if you stop giving me money, uh, I am going to kill your wife. Oh, my God. And I tell you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to call my buddies who works for the police department. I'm going to have these trumped up charges against you. I'm going to get you arrested. And, I'm, and, and I know you can get out because you got my money. That's what he said. You can bail yourself <laughs> out. But what you can't undo is that mugshot. I just want you to get a mugshot so I can blackball you as a businessman. And I can and I have to put your wife in a position to let look all her friends in the eye and know that she's married to a crook. Oh, my gosh. I mean, think about the bullying. In, in oh, that. that's just that's just insane. It's, it's, it's insane. just insane. It's hard. It's hard to conceive of things like that uh, happening. But obviously, I mean, you're living proof that these things these things to happen. And I think one of the toughest things, Brandon, is that when when you want to do the right thing, sometimes doing the right thing, it's a, it seems like it's a longer route to success. And you're and we're often surrounded by people who seem to be doing the wrong thing, but it seems to be working for them. And it's very frustrating when you're trying to do the right thing. It is. I mean, there it seems like no good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. And all the bad deeds gets re get rewarded. <laughs> I mean, you look at how people sort of rise up the ranks. But, you know, one of the most powerful weapons against uh, leadership sabotage and even self-sabotage is actually mm -hmm. two things. One uh, is the courage to have integrity. Yeah. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is it sounds really simple, but it's difficult. Um, is that whenever you show up, you should challenge the status quo of a place mm -hmm. just by, by your sheer presence of showing up, how you show up. You know, I, I heard you in, in a speech one day say, you know, there are a lot of factors we can't change when we wake up. Like there are things that try to stop you when you wake up. It's the same when you walk into a culture or you inherit a culture. But knowing that if there are a lot of people, take you know Elizabeth Holmes at Theranos, formerly of uh, Theranos, uh, if you will, there are a lot of people who who threw their integrity out the window yeah. to get her to give these false vials of blood to shareholders and continue yeah. to take their money. Uh, and yeah. you need to be the one that says it stops right here because I believe in integrity. The yeah. second thing, and this is for self saboteurs, people who sabotage themselves, is for you to curate a self positive self identity, a positive self identity is seeing yourself as a winner, as somebody who can who can overcome, and as somebody who does what they say they're going to mm -hmm. do, regardless of what what barriers they face. Yeah, and I, and I think I think as well, Brandon is um, part of that is you have to be prepared to be lonely for a little bit. Maybe you're going to be out on an island on your own uh, because unfortunately the world we live in, sometimes when you uh, when you pursue the right path, when you have that integrity, as I said, I mean, we live in a world where people are very used to taking shortcuts and want the easy route. So you may be quite lonely because you may be disrupting the, the, the gravy boat that everybody's on. Yeah, yeah. Gravy, yeah. And, or the gravy know, train. Sorry, as I just completely mangled. Well, I don't want to get overly <laughs> nuanced, though, but, yeah. you know, the, the most effective leaders are, and the wisest leaders of our, time, of our time, they are very comfortable behave, but navigating disagreement. Like, they understand that, uh, that me saying no when everybody's saying yes um, is, is okay. And they're very comfortable in that space. And because they're comfortable in discord, they're able to do another thing. And that other thing is, is they're able to position themselves to be developers of other leaders. And when you develop other leaders, you inherently, if you are part of a startup, or if you are part of a division, or if you are leading a department for your company, uh, you, you build systems for those leaders that you are developing to operate within. And, and this is where sabotage, the breeding ground for sabotage happens. A lot of times leadership sabotage is, is the mistake that a lot of organizations give leaders or developing leaders things to manage instead of systems to manage within. And so you have these caretakers of traditional systems and then those people who are courageous enough to be independent and dare to be alone, 
who are innovating new ways to do things. And those saboteurs say, no, 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 you, you can't get too creative over there, my friend. This is how we've always done it. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> if yeah. You, if you give people things to develop in, then you, you, you will see a lot more people leaning on their integrity uh, a lot more. Yeah, you remind me of uh, somebody I worked with um, many years ago now and uh, somebody I admire tremendously, but we would have this big, the expanded executive team meeting at, at this place. And maybe there'd be 12 or 14 people around the table and uh, we'd be going along and sort of reached agreement and everything. And then he, he used to be like, he used to be like, you know, the, the, the juror in 12 Angry Men or something, you know, at the very end, he'd just go, no. And he just like throw it all on the table. We used to we used to laugh. We used to call them bombs with his name attached to it. And it was great <laughs> because he, he wasn't going there to get along. He was going there to make sure that the best outcome came out of it. If that meant, you know, throwing a spanner in the works at the end, so be it. So be it. Uh, you know, that's how we get better. And listen, uh, crazy, crazy folks, um, the crazy ones, as Apple calls them, are, are the ones that change the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's just it's important to run to the finish line and not get tripped up. You know, yeah. prepare pe people, leadership books, consultants, mentors, they tell you that in order to be an effective leader, is important for you or effective in anything. It's important for you to rise early, show up to work on time, work hard, mm -hmm. be resilient. But very rarely do they say, hey, oh, and there's like every now and then there's gonna be somebody on the other side of the door when you arrive to work early on time to work hard, who's who set a, a trap to trip you up. <laughs> the bucket, <laughs> and it happens the bucket of water over the a door. The bucket of water <laughs> to fall on your head when you walk in. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I think, and I, and I think that's a really, yeah, and I think it's a really important uh, point, Brandon, and that's why I, f I think your book is fascinating is uh, one of the things I noted when we started talking is when you move into a leadership position, nobody ever prepares you for those people. And I guess we're all naive, and I've done it myself um, on, on many occasions um, throughout m my career, is you go in and you sort of stupidly expect everybody to, number one, respect you know your your background and what you have to offer and then to at least give you a chance right and then you kind of get surprised early on when suddenly you discover hey it looks like these people some people aren't on board it looks like some people are actually going behind my back or going over here or sabbath and it comes as a real surprise because nobody prepares you for that yeah nobody nobody does and but just know that you're not alone i mean it happens mm -hmm. to everybody and i and i tell people the great story of uh, of Martin Luther King Jr. He was a, a, a consummate uh, uh, target for saboteurs. Yeah. Another one, Steve Jobs. You know, Scully effectively got him fired from his own company that he founded. And and but for every Martin Luther King Jr., for every Steve Jobs, for every you name X Y Z leader that you admire. There are probably hundreds of those people. And the reason we we talk about one and lift up the legacy of one and not the other, and we don't even know about the others, is in large part because they didn't have the instincts or the tools necessary to overcome leadership sabotage. I mean, think about how profound that is. You know, one in every three leader that I talk to has their own story of leadership sabotage and even less have the tools to, to even overcome it. So yeah. if 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 Steve Jobs lacked that that skill, we never have the the MacBook Pro, the iPhone, none of that stuff. And so we owe it to ourselves to to guard our leadership journeys from from sabotage. Yeah, because because uh, let's face it, Brandon, like it's very easy then to get uh, to get down, to get cynical, to start going, okay, well if I can't beat them, I'll join them, or I'll or to get fall into the trap of okay well i'm if this is all political well i'm going to figure out how to be the most political person here rather than staying the course i mean that's a huge temptation isn't it you know it's it's remarkable and you know there is a there's an assessment that i think everybody need to take within themselves and and it's twofold one 
is to understand and with great clarity what you're not good at uh, and to build teams around you of people who are good at where you're weak at. But then the other thing is for you to take a personal assessment of what you're tempted by. Mm. Um, some people may love money. Uh, it's important to know that. Some people may love uh, being admired by other people. It's important for you to know that. And in and, and, and understanding those forces within you that may compel you to want to remain the status quo or to compel you to want to think about doing things unethically, you can create, create um, circles around yourself that help you to avoid those temptations. Give the credit card, a company credit card to somebody else that you trust. You know, hire, you know, uh, you know, a, a real accountant or make sure that accounts are payable, put in processes in place. I mean, we got to barricade ourselves because as much as sabotage happens to us, we also do it to ourselves too. Yeah, I, I think that's a fantastic point. And, 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 uh, and almost unconsciously, because the other part too is when when people come into leadership positions, and we've all experienced this, especially early on in your in your early leadership positions, you you again can get tempted by this idea. Okay, I'm in the leadership position, therefore I should know everything. I should have the answer to everything. Instead of going, no, I'm in this position to figure out who are the best people who have the answers to this. I have an answer. I have answers to a few things. But a to few. your point. And to your point, I don't have answers to a lot of things. And I love that point you brought up about figuring out what you're not good at, because that's great. That has helped me enormously because, I mean, I've turned down jobs and stuff in the past where I just was. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate the offer. Really appreciate the opportunity. But I'm not that's not what I'm good at. That's not my role. But, you yeah. know, what's interesting about that is uh, is that's where promotion and growth happens. It happens in ignorance. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time and leaders that I talk to all the time that ignorance is the brick that paves the path to new knowledge. And if you know everything, then you don't have as many bricks to lay down that path to new knowledge. And because think about it, whenever you get a promotion, you're going to a place of discovery. You're going to a place where you don't understand, where you don't know. And it's important for you to embrace the unknowing so that you could become better and that you can do so that you can do new things. And that's when sabotage happens, because there are people who know that place that you're entering into. They know the processes, the protocols. They know how to be passive aggressively defiant. They know how. And so, <laughs> so that's why my book is so important, because the more you get elevated in life, in leadership and professionally, the more you're going to need to know the signs of sabotage before they strike. And there are four of them. And I call them the four horsemen of sabotage. Uh, the first is jealousy, not in any particular order. Uh, but in sabotage, in my book, it breaks down the nuances and the, uh, the ways of jealous behavior. Uh, it defines it in a way that helps you understand what it is and then outlines the kind of sabotage or the kind of sabotage that jealous people will execute. It does it for the second horseman, which is arrogance. Yeah, we're just, just on that one of jealousy, because I, I think that's, that's just to underline that, because sometimes, as you said, I mean, you can get promoted or you can join a new company and be unaware that perhaps there's somebody there who was passed over because you can, you know, for you to come in or somebody who, else who liked a different kind of, or lots of different things okay, or people absolutely yeah and and again that can really derail you if you suddenly discover you know why is this person like acting this strangely why are they doing these things and then you realize because let's face it most times you go into a company they never tell you that yeah i mean it's, it's just a, it's a reality you know the other horseman is arrogance yeah. we know those folks and sometimes it's us <laughs> sometimes it could be us and you know, arrogant, arrogance is a is, is a lack of self-awareness. It's a mm -hmm. it's a drive. It's like driving without rearview mirrors. You don't care what damage is done to others as long as you get to your goal. And when you get to your goal, you realize that you know, I'm not really satisfied and, I'm, and I go to the next thing. So they never really accomplish anything. They lack the awareness to accept coaching, uh, if you will. 
Uh, the other horsemen is lying and liars are, we know who those are, but there are even levels to liars. Those, those who lie to distract from themselves and then mm -hmm. others who lie to intentionally harm others. Uh, and then the other one is, are the seducers, so seduction. And so that's the set, the last, the fourth horseman. And seducers enjoy getting you to go along the ride to do un close to unethical things. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. think it's fun. They think it's, they think it's exhilarating, tempting you to, to join them in their, in their pursuits. And they also that dangle from time to time that when they are rewarded for doing these things and pursuing these methods, you're going to come with them. And so you're going to be yeah. a part of my new department when I become the senior <laughs> president of yada, yada, yada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then too often what happens is you become the fall guy. You become the fuck. <laughs> and you, and I tell you, I mean, I've seen this, I've seen this and I've had experience in myself of when you look back and, and you say, oh, I really allowed myself to be seduced or used by people for their own ends. And to come back to the, you know, even the arrogance and stuff, I allowed my own arrogance or ego to let me go along for the ride because I thought it was great because I was getting all this attention. And then suddenly, yep. Yeah, you're the fall guy and uh you know they're they've swanned off and left you holding the baby no it's amazing and so uh, it, the book is really I, I think that this book is probably the most comprehensive study of sabotage that there is it even equips you the reader uh, with a, a spectrum of susceptibility to sabotage and, and identifying through anecdotes the things that are in within you that make you even susceptible to doing what you just said. Why, why is it that I just want to go along? You know, am I, you know, does, does, does comfort stop me from achieving greater? Um, yeah. Does fear of success stop me from, yep. am I just fearful of being, and so there, there are these along this spectrum. And when you read the book, you start you, inevitably, you'll find yourself on, on the spectrum somewhere. Uh, and and if you get nothing else from the book, I hope you get more than that. But you 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 gain a self awareness to at least reduce the temptation that saboteurs hope uh, lures you into their world to set you up to eventually being the fall person for whatever whatever they're after. Yeah, and 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 self awareness, uh, Brandon. As I say this often on, on these uh, podcasts is. Self-awareness is difficult. Uh, it's a, you have to go on a journey of, of self-awareness. But I honestly believe it is probably the single most, the single most thing that holds people back from realizing their potential is lack of self-awareness. And 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 it's and you can't teach people self-awareness. They have to discover it. Yeah, it's a it's a discovering journey, and I think leaders are explorers. Mm -hmm. You know, they go to different places, even within themselves, to see what's left on the table. What else can I unlock? And, um, and it is just an amazing, you know, it, it is an amazing uh, journey for every leader to be upon. Uh, and some people stop their own journey. They don't want to, even, they don't want to know about themselves. And, um, but when you stop learning is when you stop leading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I love that you mentioned the fear of success, because I, I often mention this to people, because people always think that it's fear of failure that holds people back, but it's often fear of success. Uh, I know, I know, I know people who, who talk themselves out of implying for things because they go, but if I get it, then, you know, I'd have to move or I'd have to do this and have to do that. And I'm like, well, you haven't got it yet. So probably don't worry about that yeah, and they, when, yeah. you know if, if they give you the job then you can have those considerations but it's amazing how often people feel like they want to do something feel like they want to move on they want to get promoted they want to do something else but they talk themselves out of it because they're afraid of the changes it might bring to their life yeah you you hit it it, it, will, it will disrupt uh their their present mm -hmm. and you know one of the incredible things about that is is that the present is fleeting i mean it always it it always leaves i mean it's like grasping air uh you never fully get it you know the only thing that uh, that that is concrete is the urgency that you lead with today right now yeah. right now and if if saboteurs can get you to sacrifice 
this now, this one second right now and delay your pursuits to have a better life or to do transformational things or to establish a legacy that changes the world, then they ultimately win. And in large part, saboteurs get what they want because we are ill-equipped to deal with them. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point, yeah. We reward them far too often. Uh, far too often, far too often. Yeah. Yeah, but I love it. I love the concept of the book, Brandon. I love the the ideas. I think it, it's critical because, like I said, when people move into leadership positions, they're so ill prepared. From there's very few people are natural leaders, even though you know we, sometimes we like to think we are, but very few people are. And as you said, I mean, we get we get surprised sometimes by what goes on. And the fact is that it could be, you know, as you said, with your four horsemen, it could be jealousy, it could be lying, it could be arrogance, somebody else's could be your arrogance, you could be lying to yourself. Absolutely. Um, and and you getting getting seduced. So, you know, you put your judgment on hold because everything feels really cool. Yeah, yeah. And just a, it's I'm, I'm glad that I'm focused on it because so many leaders uh, deal with this mm -hmm. and never discuss it. You know, yeah. when I was faced with my sabotage and and was faced with the challenge of trying to navigate within sabotage, I looked around my mentors and most of them had never grown a business that acquired another one. Uh, they had never, um, they just never had been in, in that position. And if they have, they never really process what happened to them in a way that allows them to inspire or equip someone else. And so for me, it was just prayer and, and luck and sheer instincts, right? And that's what a lot of people have. And so, yep. but now there is a literal God book. I mean, there is, yeah. a, you know, you can pick it up and you can read it from cover to cover and, and, and walk away and say, man, you know, I now at least have some tools needed to deal with that person who peacocks at, at work. Whenever I'm in a meeting and I say, all right, this is the end of the meeting. You got this person say, hey, hey no, no, this is what we're going to end. And, you know, just steal the closing of the CEO <laughs> or who <laughs> never says, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am, I'm going to do that thing that you asked me to do. They always edge and uh and make you look weaker than like, I, I never know how to deal with those now i know what to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i yeah. know what to do and that's why i love the book so the book is called sabotage leadership that overcomes betrayal theft and deceit brandon wilson all of uh, brandon's information and the links to the book will be below this uh, video i would absolutely encourage people to go and, and buy this book and read it because you know if you're moving into a leadership position or if to be honest we're all in leadership positions because you have to lead yourself first before you can lead anybody else uh, i would really really encourage you to do that because it's a long lonely road sometimes and anything that can help you is a very good thing and and as brandon said we don't always have access to somebody who has been there and done that, maybe in our circle or whatever. So here's somebody who's been there and done that and has written the book. So thank you, Brandon. No, thank you so much. I, I hope this book is, is, a, is a gift to all of your listeners and, uh, and allows them to continue to lead in transformative ways. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Brandon. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.